welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for watching i am um now this is the second part of what you need to know about the fruit of the holy spirit i talked about some of the fruit of the holy spirit in the last video which is linked up here but this is a continuation of that i will continue with the fruit of kindness i've talked about the fact that the fruit of the holy spirit is not a gesture that we get to learn it is a fruit that is produced by us depending on the spirit of god it if its fruit is as a result of livelihood which means the tree is being nurtured it's receiving water it's receiving sunlight and then the branches are healthy and it can bring forth healthy fruit so because we are connected to the holy spirit receiving sunlight the light of jesus the sunlight and then us being nurtured by the water of the world woo! That's how this fruit is being produced because you have to get in this world and let the word of God water you, washed by the water of the word so that your heart and the works of the flesh will fall off and your pretense will fall off and you know that this is genuinely you. When you talk about kindness, I searched about it and in my study I realized that the word that is used for kindness here is not about being nice. A lot of people are nice and it is very easy for us as humans to say that somebody that is nice is a kind person. Very easy because it is a gesture. Niceness is a gesture. Kindness is not a gesture. Kindness is a fruit, especially when it has to do with authenticity. You are authentically kind. And the words used here is usefulness, moral excellence in character or demeanor, which is how you treat people, how you relate to people, your demeanor to people. So how people experience you has to be like, this is a kind person. Having to talk about kindness in this light as the fruit of the spirit, you get to realize that. So when I am someone that has integrity, I am kind to someone, that's kindness. So when I keep to my word, I am kind. So when I'm useful to people, I am kind. Now, the way I saw this is, it's both beneficial for you and for others. Because as a kind person, you are genuine, you are authentic, you are helpful, you are someone that wants to help others, you genuinely want to help people, you genuinely want to be there for people, and you have what is called moral excellence. You're not trying to use people, maybe as a young man that is older and you see some teenage girls, you don't, you're not trying to lead them astray. Because I can be real here to say, they may have a crush on you, they may like you. I mean, because you look like the potential fantasy that they have been seeing, the fantasy kind of guy in the movies that they see, oh, you look good, you dress good, and you have a little job. They may not even know if your credit is good, if you have good money in your accounts, but because of the way you look, they just like the way you look. And you don't have to take advantage of them because they have a crush on you. You don't have to take, you have to be a man of integrity. And also with women, so women take advantage of young, younger boys. You have to be someone of integrity, a man or woman of integrity and moral excellence. That's kindness as a fruit of the spirit. The other word that is used here is benignity, doing acts that are kind. I will move to the next fruit and talk about goodness. Goodness, the word used here is beneficence. I think this is the first time I saw this word, beneficence. It's interpreted as doing good. In the scriptures, we see that Jesus is spoke about in acts chapter 10 verse 38 and you know that god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power then jesus went around doing good ah and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him how was jesus able to go about doing good because he was anointed with the holy spirit and power so which means now we can clearly agree that it is the fruit of the spirit the fruit of goodness that allows us to go out, to do good, to just want to be good to people, to just want to treat people right, to just want to be a blessing to people. And I hope from the last point of talking about kindness, you see that kindness is actually about moral excellence, about how people perceive you, about how you treat people. Then you can talk about goodness now. It's just uprightness of mind, of you doing the right thing helping people this is a quality of being generous a generous person jesus was generous he was generous with his gift he was generous with his time with people of course he gave them the time not not to waste time but to teach them about god to speak life to them to heal them and all of that so you can become a generous person and generosity is not marked by money 
Because some people can come to talk about the fruit of the Spirit and talk about goodness and think that goodness is all about you giving people money. Generosity doesn't stop at money. You can be generous with being someone that if people come to you, you can give them quality advice. Quality, because God giving you the wisdom, you are not giving them an advice that's going to lead them astray. You're giving them information that's going to help them. You could be generous with information and opportunities that open up to you. That's generosity. And that's a fruit of the Spirit, which means you have goodness. You have beneficence. You just want to do good. And you love doing good. It's not something that you're being pressured to do. It is not something like every time I have to just be doing good. It's not something that is a pressure on you. It's something that you just love to do. And the other point I want to make about that is you become selflessly good. And it's not for a show off or for a build up of your reputation. But it is just a fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is that's authentically who you are becoming and who you've become. It's a daily thing. Which means it is all about, it starts with the fruit of love, unconditional love, agape of God. Then it spreads its branches. And you see these different fruits. Like you talk about goodness now, that it is unconditional. I'm not being good to you because you were good to me. I'm not being good to you because you're going to be good to me in the future. I'm just being good to you because that's how the Spirit of God leads me. To be good to you. And of course, you can talk about goodness here, and I, I would say this, maybe it's going to help someone. Jesus was going from place to place doing good, but he didn't do good everywhere. He didn't force himself on people to do good for them. So you don't have to go down, knock people's door down, say, I want to do good to you, I want to do good to you because I just feel like doing good. You can be generous if the Holy Spirit lays it on your heart to be good to people, just do it. But then it's not like this show of like, I just want to go and do good for this person. And the person's like, I didn't ask for it. I don't really need your help. But when you see a need, you can be generous. Apart from just giving, you can be generous. And I hope that it's not misleading. But I said it because it just dropped in my spirit. And I'm, like just to tell someone that because you have the fruit of the spirit doesn't mean you don't walk in wisdom. That's clearly just to clarify that. So that someone will not be like, so uh, if you're generous, so why don't you just go about everywhere? You know, Jesus didn't walk about everywhere and just be doing miracles. He did miracles where people most times people called for him. In fact, like Bartimaeus in the book of Mark chapter 10, Bartimaeus had to call for him. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. And Jesus was still moving and he kept shouting and then Jesus stopped. So sometimes people need to ask for help before you help. Because you have the capacity doesn't mean that you kind of like just do, 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 do. At some point you train them to kind of want to take advantage of you. So just that's just a wisdom for someone. The next fruit is faithfulness. Faithfulness here means credence. And just like God is faithful and we can trust God and God is dependable, that is the kind of life that should run down to you because he is your head. It should run down to you that people can see that you are believable. When you give your word, you stand on that word. And that goes back to me talking about kindness, that you are someone that has integrity, a man of your word. But this, is, this goes a step higher than that, that people could clearly see that they can rely on you. Someone can say, I can rely on this guy because he's a faithful person. I can rely on this guy because he has fidelity. Like over time, you've dealt with them and you've seen that they keep giving you that constancy of result of like, you try them even and you still see that they are who they are. They are faithful. They can be trusted. And that is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Most times you can wonder why is our world like this? Why are people not faithful? People are not believable because they cannot just be. They are humans. It would take the Holy Spirit for people to come to a place of like, they are faithful and they are believable. And it is through you being believable and being a faithful person that it can lead you to people being able to trust you. Because over time, they've seen that you are trustworthy. It is your faithfulness that leads people to say, I can trust this person. That leads people to open up their heart to trust you because being faithful and being someone that can be relied upon makes you trustworthy and that is a fruit of the holy spirit you would love to have it the next one is gentleness gentleness here yeah, the word used here is meekness and humility so i know we can talk about gentle people as these pious religious people who are like walk down you no know, walk in a godly manner i don't know if there's a godly manner to walk in reality but then people walk like that and you'll be like oh he's a very calm person he's a very gentle person you don't really know who is humble humility is not 
an outward appearance of, oh, the way this person walks, the way this person talks calmly. Humility is about the heart. Somebody can talk in a tone that is like, you know, brethren, I don't actually talk very loud. Like, this is my demeanor. This is how I talk. This is how I communicate with people. Like, they never raise their voice. They are always having a very calm tone. Like me, sometimes people blame me like, oh, they could think that I have pride because I have this, you know, deep, voice and loud voice so maybe sometimes i'm talking to someone and the voice is really really deep so they think you are trying to maybe threaten them or intimidate them but i'm not trying to this is just who i am and just putting myself out there because this could be interpreted like he's not a humble person this one will cause you out <laughs> but that is not true a fruit of the spirit is not about it's not about this personality trait of like you have a soft voice you walk calm or this way you dress makes you humble of course they are dressing that can make you humble but then in reality it's about the posture of the heart it's about someone that is you a lack of false pride a lack of false pride you are just who you are you are just you know who you are and you are who you are humility is not about humiliation you humiliating yourself so that people will think that you're humble Sometimes when we want to put up the act of humility, it leads to humiliation because you are trying to do an eye service for people to think that you are humble, trying to accept what in reality you should not accept because you want to call it humility. And sometimes you need to speak up. A humble person, check the life of Jesus. Jesus took Cain, went into the temple, flocked the hell out of, <laughs> the, hell of the people that were selling in the temple. People could easily say, ah, this man is humble, he's so boastful, he's so proud, he's, he has so much pride. But that wasn't pride. That, that was justice. Because a really humble person will seek justice. Being humble doesn't mean you don't speak up for what is right. In fact, being humble means you do speak up for what is right. I hope, I hope this is helpful. The other thing about gentleness as a fruit of the Spirit, which it's interpreted as humility is teachability. A humble person is someone that is teachable. Someone that wants to learn. Someone that is in constant learning. Someone that doesn't think that they know everything. Because you see a lot of people and they feel like they know all. Mr. Know all. They are always like at the top of their game. They know everything. Before you even talk about it, they already know it. That's pride. And that's falsehood. Because none of us is a monopoly of knowledge. Sometimes you have to be quiet and let people express what they know so that you can learn. And that's the product of being teachable. I wasn't like this before. I thought I know too much. But then God had to humble me and make me realize a lot of things and make me learn how to listen to other people's opinion and perspective and even to get to learn. Because everything is not argument. Everything is not about trying to prove that you know. Sometimes you just need to be teachable. Allow yourself to learn. I'm not perfect at it, but I'm still learning that this is a fruit of the Spirit. And it's not something that I can conjure up. It's not something that I can make up. It's something that when I align myself with God, the Holy Spirit is living in me. He is the one leading me. The last fruit of the Spirit, which is the ninth one, is self-control. Now, self-control here says, The virtue of one who masters his desires and passions, especially his sensual appetite. Now, you can see that the reason for all the infidelity in marriages and all the sexual vices that we see in our society with masturbation, with porn and every other thing that is happening in our society is because of the lack of of self-control and self-control which is you could interpret it as discipline but really it's not just about the discipline that you can put up that you you can stomach up on your own it is a discipline that comes as a result of the help by the spirit of god because the spirit of god will help you change your perception and your perspective about some things about your desires so that you will not be able to give into your desires because they are strong desires because your hormones it's your biology they are connected to it so sometimes for people that were abused or were exposed to some content at an early age, somehow this thing leads them to porn and all these sexual and sensual vices. But you need to come to a place of knowing when the Holy Spirit works in you, He will give you self-control that your desires and passions will be in control. They will not be your master, but you will master them. Because when your desires master you, that's where addiction is birth. Your desire has mastered you. You are addicted to porn. You are addicted to sex. You are addicted to this. You are addicted to that. You are addicted to drugs. Because it's all about the sensual. You are trying to get that dopamine hit so that you can feel good. You're trying to feel good. A smoker wants to feel good. Someone that is doing drugs wants to feel good. Someone that is doing this or that, that having sex, watching porn, you want to feel good. 
you're trying to fill a void. And when you have the Holy Spirit in you, is he has filled you up. Now the result would be your passions don't master you. You master them. And the other word that is used for self-control here is continence. Continence here means exercising self-constraint in sexual matters. It's not through your power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. And that's why scripture says in that Galatians chapter 5, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. When you allow yourself to walk in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, your sensual desires do not have you. Your passions do not have you. You are obeying like it's God comes first. The will of God comes first. The command of God comes first. And even when you come to talk about premarital sex, God's conviction for you not to do this is stronger than your desire to want to do this. It doesn't mean you stop having desires to have sex because now you're believing God, but it means those desires are not your master. You can master them and not give in to them. Thank you so much for watching this second part of what you need to know about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I hope that this will really help you in your work with the Holy Spirit and your work with God and your experience with people. Do not forget to check the first video, which I did the first part of the fruit of the Spirit and then completed it with this one. If you didn't watch that first one, you can check it up here. And then if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, do me a favor please hit that subscribe button and then click the like button. I would love to see you in the next video and remain blessed. It's a pleasure to have you watch my channel. God bless.